Hello. Greetings. And we have new Kalingo. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, website changed. Oh, did it? I don't yes. know. We have numbers. Oh, oh. Happy new Kalingo. <laughs> so what number is this class? Uh, 300. 300. Okay. And we have the uh, pronunciation on here. Mm. I'm still. I still think we should be able to. There should be more hyperlinks on this page. I need to. I need to give him some recommendations here. Um, you should be able to click on things. You can't click on anything on this website, so it's, I don't think it's very well designed yet. Like, if you want to click on a teacher or on a word or on, you can't click on anything on the website. So you, I can't even. Is there even a place to find archived classes on the new Colingo? Because you used to be able to do that. Is there any way to do that now? Uh, what? Like, uh, how? Like old classes? Can you find them anymore? On yes, you have past. But can you can you search by teacher? Mm, by teacher, no. You used to be able to. By levels, I don't know why by levels. Yeah. Hmm. Used to be by teacher, but now it's yeah. only yeah, yeah. It could nine thousand uh, hundred lessons. Wow, that's a lot of lessons. And upcoming uh, four hundred forty. A lot. Oh, my, my next class is four hundred. So um, this class. Uh, is uh, if it's three hundred, let's see. What's our what's our uh, models of obligation? So they they think that's three hundred. Yeah, maybe must I must must if I have to. I don't know. Do you think that's three hundred? Maybe. Hmm. But passive voice is only one hundred. What? Really? Yes. Hmm. And ED endings. Passive voice uh, plus ED endings. 100. Huh. I don't know about that. Maybe they're still working on it because I think passive voice is more advanced than 100. I think too. <laughs> so for me, it's simple because we have a passive voice. Mm. And we use for the same reason like in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if uh, for history, yeah, if we're talking to uh, of something is more important um, or object is unknown, like uh, right. the car was stolen and we yeah. don't know who stole yeah. the car. Mm -hmm. So w we have the same, and we use them, um, and it's not like in U.S. Uh, you cannot <laughs> uh, they. Uh, uh, want you to don't use. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can use uh, ev every time we want. Uh, interesting. Especially in essays, yes. Uh, you, they teach you don't use passive voice. Yeah, I guess so. I say, uh, yeah, I haven't studied essay writing in a long time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but our teacher said that uh, they prepare to write essays and uh, uh, they try to use not passive voice, normal voice. Yeah, yeah. Active voice. What voice? Active. Active voice, yeah. The opposite of passive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, I hope you're not too hungry because I'm going to be talking about one of the most delicious foods in the world. And uh, I think as a Pole, you might like this. Uh, this I think this would be a very Polish-friendly dinner, dinner dish. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but um, I, think, I think you would find this to be a very tasty meal. So we're going to talk about food today. 
and um, so and my uh, my first question uh, I was going to see if there's going to be anyone in this class and there's just so far there's just one person but I was wondering if anyone knows about how to work <laughs> new <Yeah>. girl. <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, it's just people are confusing it well there's nothing really that different just click uh, but uh, I will have to wait because now you cannot uh, you don't have something like waiting room. You have to uh, wait to the uh, time, and then you have to reload a web page, and then you can join join now. Oh. So you mean just as of today that started, or as of, or for the last few weeks? Um. No, no. Today, really? last oh. lesson was uh, with you was normal, mm -hmm. and uh, next one you had uh, uh, you didn't have a lesson was lesson with Paul, and with lesson with Paul was uh, new calling. Really? So <laughs> maybe they're trying to fix the problem because there was a thing for a while where. People could join my class like five minutes early, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they're trying to fix that. Because then I would be like, I'm not, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so uh, that's interesting. Uh, hmm. I'll have to see what that's all about. I wonder if they're talking about it. Let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, let's see. Yes, features added today. Okay. One second. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they're what the teachers are talking about right now. This is what the teachers are talking about. Okay, new feature is added today. Teachers and students have filters for choosing specific classes. Good, we've been promising that since we started this. Uh, class levels are included. Uh, and classes all have descriptions of title, interest, grammars. Oh, interest. Good, 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 good. I was uh, because <laughs> you know the last few weeks the classes are like like how to make shukrut garni. Like what is this about? You know, like, what is she, you know, like, so it has to say food on it. Otherwise, people are like, what is, what is it like? Paper? Is it like how to make artwork? Like, what is this? Yes, uh, we have news and politics, science and technology, travel, music, the environment, art and literature, uh, business and money, sports and hobbies, pop culture, TV and film, history and culture. Great. And pop culture and history and culture, uh, food and health. Good. So it's two times a culture. <laughs> yeah. Pop, well, pop culture is uh, is kind of a separate thing from just regular culture, uh, like pop culture. And additionally, art and literature. <laughs> yeah, which is also culture. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it is a little redundant, maybe. But I teach both art, art and I don't know. I teach both art and literature and history and culture and pop culture. I teach all three of those, and sometimes they can kind of go together. And who? Um, I don't know why they use a lot of <laughs> culture, but sports and hobbies put in the one container. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe more people want to talk about culture. I guess a lot of the kind of people that like to teach. Language might also be interested in culture, and the type type of people that like to learn languages might also be interested in culture. So we do a lot of different culture stuff, I guess. It might go hand in hand. Plus, you can't really learn a language without learning culture. Um, but we don't always talk about American culture, do we? So, Miracle is teaching something about a Chinese artist, and my next class will be about the Chinese language. That's interesting. And then Miracle will be t talking about Zambia in Africa. Oh. Uh -huh. See, and like where it says upcoming classes, you should be able to click on that and see all the upcoming classes. You should be able to click that. You should be able to click on Miracle's face, and then it should show you all of Miracle's classes and all, and all about Miracle, like in like a bio. There's a lot of things that are not hyperlinks that need to be hyperlinks. I need to make a suggestion. You should. I mean, websites these days you can click on everything. Everything you can click on, and on this website you can't click on anything. No. 
Oh. My current movies. Oh, that's cool though. I think it went away. Thanks a lot. So okay, now okay, they have made it a little better now. I can click on the old classes, and it pops up immediately with uh, with uh, the video of the old class. That's good because I don't think you could do that before. Here, I'll show you. We have this weird guy here, oh. <laughs> Ben, and then you now you see you can click on these. So click and boom, immediately you see vocabulary. You see a you see right away you see a class immediately. That's nice. Before because we're gonna do a lesson that's kind of based on a documentary. That's really good. I like that. That's good. And I don't even have to be logged in. See, I'm not even logged in, and I can. That's good. That's good. Oh, but they're old classes. That's why. Oh, okay. See, these should be able to do that for this too. These should be clickable. That's why. Okay. And how do you even? Hmm. Well, we're working on it. We're working on it. I'll have to give some of my suggestions. It's long overdue. So, um, do you know where Alsace is? Alsace. Have you ever heard of that? Alsace. Yes. No, no. Yeah, it's spelled. I think it's spelled like that. Alsace. It's a region in Europe. It's an interesting. Oh, um, it's France. Yes, but it's really, really close to. We have a little different uh, Alsatia. Ah, uh, Alsatia, sure. So here is this region of Alsace, and it's right next to Germany in Switzerland. See that? It's right here. Uh, so, and Alsace has its own culture. So even though it's in France, uh, they, uh, they're so close to Germany that they have, that they're influenced by the culture of Germany. You see that little pink area? That's Alsace. And the big city in Alsace is Strasbourg. And even the name Strasbourg Sounds more German than it does French. Yes. It's, a French it's a French city, Strasbourg. It sounds very German. So they're very influenced by German culture. So um, this dish I'm going to talk about comes from Alsace. So it's Alsatian. It's an Alsatian dish. And it's very. It, <laughs> it, uh, it wants to be a German dish. You look at it, it looks very German. It's like meat, meat, sausage, meat, kielbasa. Meat, so sauerkraut, <laughs> meat, <laughs> like lots of sauerkraut, potatoes, onions. It's very heavy dish, and it's awesome. And they, you cook it all day, and it's very delicious. And um, so it's very German style. So maybe they are uh, like Belgium. Maybe. I don't know much about Belgian fare, Belgian cuisine. I don't know what kind of... Do they eat more meat in, in Belgium? I don't know much about Belgian food. Except for waffles. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, as> waffles. <laughs> okay. That's all I know about. So, um, hey, if I was if I was going to have one student in my class in this class today, I was hoping it'd be you because I think you would appreciate this meal. <laughs> um, so, choucroute garni. So the name is is French. Um, can you guess what choucroute means? Mm. It almost sounds like what it uh, what it what we think it. It almost sounds like the English word or the German word. Um, I'll give you a hint, actually. Chou in French means cabbage. Chou. Mm. Mon petit chou. So sauerkraut. <laughs> right. Choucroute. Choucroute. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Choucroute. And garni probably means garnished, garnished sauerkraut. That's all it is. Um, and as a little trivia, by the way, um, shu 
um, petit chou. So chou is um, cabbage, and petit chou means little cabbage, which also means Brussels sprouts. You know the little, the little. I don't know what they call them. If you know that is a little vegetables, the little green round vegetables that are like little cabbages. And so petit chou, is Brussels sprouts, and it's a term of endearment. So um, lovers will talk to each other and say and call each other my little my little cabbage or my Brussels sprout. They say oh mon petit chou. They say that to each other, <laughs> which is kind of funny to call each other a little cabbage. <laughs> um, so that's my trivia for the day. Um, so uh, models of obligation is our grammar skill for the day. Um, so what, um, what are your, do you know what staples are? When we talk about food, we talk about shopping, we talk about staples. Um, and when we're talking about food and we use the word staples, we're talking about things that you need to have in the house. Um, like you got to have it all the time because you use it so much. It's really common. So what are your staples? What kind of food do you need to have in the house for you? Um, it's, uh... Uh, appliance, uh, furniture. Oh no, I mean like food, about food though. So staples, we talk about. Okay, it's, uh, uh -huh. it's like grocery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Important groceries, staples are important groceries. Okay. You need to always have. Always. Uh, uh, always. Uh, I have uh, uh, groats. What is different different kinds of growths? <laughs> of, of what? Uh, growth. Uh, I have to type. Yeah. Yes, yeah, growth. Yeah. How does it spell? And, uh, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that in my life. Growths. Um. <laughs> growths. What do we have here? Uh, like buckwheat groats, oh. uh, barley groats. Okay, uh, so it's a millet groats. <laughs> oh, so it's different kinds of grain. Hulled grain. Yes. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, and we, so we have uh, uh, how to like instant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Growths. Uh, you have some bugs. Uh, mm -hmm. You can boil them mm -hmm. uh, because this plastic is allowed to uh, withstand this temperature. Uh -huh. So you uh, put this uh, bag of uh, these growths to boiling water. Uh -huh. And then uh, it's uh, boiling, and uh, depends uh, what you use, uh, how many minutes you have to wait. Uh, you have uh, rice in these uh, bags too. They are uh, with holes, small holes. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, get this bag uh, cut off, and <laughs> you pour on your plate. So, uh, and is it like, so it's just the grains, it's not, it's, does it, do you use it for like porridge? Or is it just like, you just eat No, 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 they are whole grains, okay. uh, but yeah. special, barley, mm -hmm. you have, you have uh, rice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, something like this, yeah, type yeah. of millet. Yeah, all different grains. Yeah. I see. Cool. Um, it's very popular. Mm. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I've never heard of that. Uh, so that's but that's so that's a staple in your household. You gotta have yeah. instant groats and <coughs> very fast you can make a dinner for dinner. Yeah. So you can add some uh, uh, grease to this and. We, uh, and uh, meat or <laughs> eggs or something like that, and you uh, have a dish. Huh. All right. 
That's interesting. See, that's why I asked this question because then I learned about what different staples are. Like common staples in the United States might be milk, eggs, um, you know, stuff like that. I don't, I don't technically, I don't buy milk actually, but uh, we do have eggs usually in the house. Hello, Abdul Rahman. Hi, Azharan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. What about you? Not, uh, not bad. I'm doing good. And uh, it's been a while since I've seen you, hasn't it? Yeah, I was in Saudi Arabia. You were what? I was in Saudi Arabia. You're in Saudi Arabia, and where are you now? Yeah, I'm in Iraq. Uh, I'm back in Iraq. You're back in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. You know, I want to say that you're one of my first students in Colingo from like months and months and months yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think <laughs> I think you might be my first student. <laughs> That's great. That you're still with us. That's cool. So Thank I mean, you. I started teaching in April, and I yeah. think I think you were in one of my first classes in April, and I have a good memory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. <laughs> cool. So we have a food class today. We're talking about choucroute garni, which is a French dish, but mm. it, it's very much like a German dish because it's from a special special region in France, which is very 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 close to Germany, borders. Mm. Um, I'm googling it. What? I'm googling the food. Oh, you're Spanish googling it. Yeah. Oh, we'll tell you all about it soon. Don't worry. I'll give you <laughs> pictures and recipes, and you'll learn all that. Uh, now, you may not be able to eat it, eat the recipe, the regular recipe, because it has pork and stuff in it. I don't know if you eat pork, but you can probably make it without with different ingredients. Yeah. So the reg, the, the true dish usually probably has like lots of pork. Uh, products, <laughs> but uh, you can make it with other, probably all sorts of other things, but the typical one uh, has pork hocks and pork sausage and all these different things. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so I was just talking to Christoph about staples. That's my, uh, that's, another, that's one of our vocabulary words for today. Um, and when I talk about staples, Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about staples in English, a lot of times we're talking about when you're buying groceries at the store, buying food, mm -hmm. and when you're buying the things that you absolutely need in the house. Staples yeah. are the kind of things that you always have in the kitchen. So yes. like maybe some people might have candy for fun, or they might have some special thing for fun, but staples you always have. So what kind of, what kind of food do you need to have in the house always? What are your staples? Mm -hmm. Eggs. Eggs. Milk. Milk. Tea. Yeah. Tea. Mm -hmm. uh, fruit. Fruit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Special banana and apple and oranges because we are practicing uh, sports a lot. Which one? What's a lot? Uh, I'm playing basketball, so fruits is good. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, rice. It is a lot of air. Uh, dates. Dates. So you date. Yeah. This is, is, a, is a staple. Wow. Yeah. Here in Iraq, it is a lot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. rice and meat. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think this this stuff of food okay. that we have in our kitchen. Those those are the important things. I, that, I'm know. not a good cooker, so. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yes. I wasn't asking if you were a good cook, just asking what kind of food you need to have in the kitchen. So, yeah, um, yeah so the, so with staples, it's the kind of thing where if you run out, you're like, uh-oh, emergency, we need to go to the store because we ran out of something. We ran out of dates, we need to get dates because... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's a staple. So for me, it's like coffee. I need coffee in the house. I need... Yeah. Uh, what else? Cheese. We eat a lot of cheese in this household. What else? Is eggs. We always like to have eggs in this house. Yeah. Most of course. Yeah, eggs are in important. the breaks. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone has different staples, though. So, like, we don't drink milk really. That's not nice. But um, so, uh, Krzysztof, we spent so much time talking about groats that I didn't get. To, <laughs> I didn't, didn't get to hear about some of the other. What are these, some other staples that you have? Christoph? Of our staples, uh, 
Mm, of course, I butter. But, oh <laughs> I yeah, butter. Yeah, butter is a staple. Yeah, I don't use uh, this uh, funny one. Uh, what is it? Ma margarine? <laughs> oh no no. I no I don't use margarine, but I do use oil. I always have cooking oil, like olive yes, oil or uh, canola. And, I always have butter. And I use oil. Mm, uh, uh, American. I don't know American name. Uh, British <laughs> is rape oil. What oil? Rape oil, like. Yeah. Canola as canola. Canola, canola. Rapeseed oil or canola, rapeseed. It's uh, American, I think, is canola. Well, yeah, I think so. We we usually have both canola, olive, canola oil, yeah. olive, vegetable oil. Yeah. These are all um, peanut oil. These are all different oils you can buy to cook with. Those are staples yeah. for cooking. Yeah. Special yeah. oil, uh, olive oil, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like they not like that. Hmm? But canola is even better. Well, they're different. It's uh, some uh, kind of omega is in canola. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a better, you know, this type of oil. Uh, uh, I don't know, saturated oil. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, they say that virgin olive oil is really good for you, too. But it may be for different reasons. And uh, they both taste good, but they both taste different. So I use both. Yes, well, I, but I'm not talking uh, about uh, tasting, but about uh, health. Health, okay. I think uh, olive oil is healthy. Some, some uh, kind of this uh, of the... Uh, the feature of this oil is more healthy for your heart. Hmm. Huh. I was always taught that olive oil was really healthy. Yes, yes, but uh, this one uh, has some uh, uh, special uh, proportion that uh, uh, let you, your heart uh, be better than you have over oil. I see. All right. I have to find uh, the name of this. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 as the U.S. food is, I think it is not very healthy. I taste it a lot in Saudi Arabia. Oh, really? Like K, yeah, KFC. Oh, yeah. A lot, McDonald's. No, no, that's terrible. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's some people that eat that all the time. I, n I never eat that food. So, but I most Americans it. don't look like I do. Most Americans don't look uh, like me. <laughs> uh, it's it's they eat really some some bad food. So, uh, but you know you can find good food. You can find fresh vegetables. You can find, you know, healthy food. But people are just lazy and they like to go to the fast, fast food. food. Yeah, it's really bad. And it doesn't taste that good either. I mean, it's kind of good at first, but then it's like, it's kind of gross. Yeah. I like uh, KFC. I like it. That's good. Yeah. It's popular mm -hmm. around the world, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's popular in a lot of countries. And, but uh, not in Iraq. There's no volunteer. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah, it was not, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, so, besides talking about food, we're also going to talk about modals of um, obligation, right? Mm -hmm. So, we were just talking about staples. Uh, so, modals of obligation are like, uh, I must have eggs in the house, <laughs> or I need, I need to buy milk for, you know, something like that. That's modals. So, I want to talk about that for a little bit here and look into it further. So, let's read some rules about the grammar of modals of obligation. And Abdul Rahman, would you read this for me? Okay. Uh, first, there are many types of modal verbs. For this lesson, we will talk about ones used for obligation. Models are used to exp uh, express uh, the model, uh, the mood of a verb, such as ability, possibility, and other conditions. You do not uh, conjecture it. Conjured mod, uh, model verbs uh, and they connect, 
cannot be used without a main pair. The most common models of obligation are have to, must, and should. Models of obligation are used for comments, uh, no, for com commitments. Commitments. For commitments. Commitments. Mm -hmm. For Think commitments you make to, to work, school, family, goals you make for yourself, and other factories. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. uh, second. Uh, no, that's okay. That's good. Okay. We'll have uh, we'll have Christoph read number two. Second, must uh, is used for strong personal obligation construction. Must plus verb in infinitive. I must do this before it is too late. I must help her. Many of the obligations come from outside factors and are based on the person's opinion. I must take care of my mom since she is sick. Today I must finish my term paper. Must is also used uh, for everyday situation where there is something important that happens with uh, requires immediate, immediate uh, action. My father is in hospital, I must go there right now. I must finish the project today. You can use it in the negative form as well. It means that you are prohibited from doing something. Construction, must not, mustn't, plus verb, infinitive. You mustn't cheat on your test. She mustn't uh, drive over the speed limit. Okay. Uh, one note here is that I never hear any American say mustn't or must not. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really not used in the United States. She must not drive over the speed limit. That's just not, I'm just going to be honest, I never <laughs> hear this. I never hear this. This is not common. Uh, more common, if I skip down to number five, should is way more common. I shouldn't, you shouldn't drive over the speed limit. You shouldn't. Yeah. So this is, that's all the time we have for this at the moment. So I'm going to, but so we have, um, the other ones are have to, which is really common in, in English. Like I have to, I have to take a shower today. I you know I have to go get eggs. I have to eat dinner. Um, that's that's probably the most common model of obligation in the in American English. Fourth one is um, had to, which is past tense of have, have to, of course. And fifth is should, which is really common in American English. Uh, I should go. I'm I'm late. I, I really should go. I should go, or I should I should go to the store and get some sauerkraut. Um, okay, so um, I want to talk about shukut garni, and I was telling Christoph about Alsace. Oh no, is uh, advertisement here. So Alsace is. Um, I was saying it's a region in France which is very close to Germany and so they're really influenced by German culture uh, and so this dish which is a, a very uh, it's, a, it's a very involved dish it, dish it takes a long time to make and it's very influenced by this uh, German style of cooking uh, and, and so let me uh, let's look at it I found a recipe for it so we can learn how to make it and if there's some things that you don't eat uh, like if you don't drink alcohol or if you don't eat pork you can mix you can change some things because it, it involves both alcohol and pork so it is not very halal but uh, <laughs> but um, it's tasty uh, and this is what it looks like uh, you see there's mustard it's good with some beer on the side uh, there's potatoes sauerkraut all cooked together um, to total time two hours and 40 minutes plus overnight curing. Uh, my mom, when my mom makes this, it takes her all day. 
Families in Alsace generally eat choucroute garni during the winter time because it's such a hearty, filling dish. Jacques Pépin, uh, Pépin, uh, Pépin has adopted the recipe to make it quicker and easier, um, calling for store-bought sauerkraut instead of the homemade kind, for instance, and suggesting peanut oil as a substitute for duck or goose fat, which may be less accessible. Um, now, I think my mom uses something different than that. Uh, he also serves two or three types of mustard with a choucroute, a hot Dijon, a grainy pommery, and often a tarragon flavored mustard as well. Do you guys like mustard? Mustard, what's that? Uh, mustard is this, it's a sauce. I don't know if, if you have it. Um, it's from mustard. So mustard seed, you have it in your region, uh, Aldo Raman, and they mm -hmm. make, and they make, and they talk about that, uh, and, and they make this yeah. condiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's from buckwheat. Buckwheat. The mustard seed uh, from buckwheat. Uh, buckwheat. I think buckwheat. <laughs> I thought it was from mustard. <laughs> No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, the mustard seed. Mustard seed? Yeah, yeah, it's in the it's even in the Bible they talk about mustard seeds in the it's uh it's a kind of plant, mustard seed. Yeah. yeah. I believe. It looks like buckwheat though, doesn't it? So uh oh yeah, Christoph has a nice picture of wow, that looks tasty. That looks like salt pork there. Um, I think my mom uses salt pork or pork hocks, actually. So here's how we make it. This is the ingredients down here. <coughs> a large, sturdy, resealable plastic bag. Combine a third cup of kosher salt with the sugar. Add pork ribs. Shake well to thoroughly coat the ribs with the seasonings. Um, seal the bag and refrigerate the ribs overnight for up to 24 hours. That's so you're going to marinate these ribs. Well, let's look at let's look at the ingredients before we keep reading because it'll make more sense. So we need a third cup of salt, plus more for seasoning. We need two tablespoons of light brown sugar, three pounds of pork back ribs or baby back ribs cut into three sections, six pounds of sauerkraut, a quarter cup of duck fat or peanut oil one large onion co coarsely chopped my mom makes my mom uses many onions and yeah me too <laughs> uh, four large garlic cloves coarsely chopped garlic is a good thing 20 juniper berries three large bay leaves a half teaspoon of caraway a half teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper uh, one teaspoon three cups of chicken stock uh, one and a half cups of Riesling or Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. I, I've never heard of Pinot Gris. Um, I've heard of Pinot Grigio. Um, so this is so you need white wine, basically. <laughs> um, two pounds Polish kielbasa. Skin. Yes, the most important yes. ingredient. <laughs> yes, uh, ten skinless hot dogs. One two-pound piece of boneless boiled ham. Uh, two pounds of medium potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. Ten potatoes. Yeah. And, of course, an assortment of mustards. Mmm. Good brown grainy mustards. Not the yellow stuff. The brown stuff. The good stuff. So, the next day, preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Rinse the sauerkraut in cold water and squeeze dry. Set a large roasting pan over two burners on high heat and melt the duck fat. Add the onion and garlic and cook over moderately low heat, stirring until softened about seven minutes. Stir in the sauerkraut, juniper berries, bay leaves, caraway seeds, black pepper, stock, and wine, and bring to a rolling boil over high heat. Meanwhile, rinse the pork ribs under cold water and pat dry. Nestle the pork ribs in the sauerkraut and bring back to a boil over moderately high heat. Cover tightly with foil and bake for one and a half hours. Remove the pork ribs from the sauerkraut. Cut down uh, in between the ribs. Return the ribs to the sauerkraut and nestle in the kielbasa, hot dogs, and ham. That's a lot of pork. <laughs> uh, cover and bake until the meats are hot. 
about 25 minutes. Discard the bay leaves. Meanwhile, in a large saucepan, cover the potatoes with cold water, add salt, and bring to a boil over high heat. Cook the potatoes until tender when pierced. Drain the potatoes and cover to keep warm. To serve, mound the hot sauerkraut in the center of a very hot uh, dinner plate and partially tuck in the pork ribs and the kielbasa. Arrange the hot dogs and ham around the sauerkraut. Alternatively, pile the sauerkraut on a large heated platter and garnish with the meats. Serve the choucroute with the boiled potatoes and assorted mustards. Um, now they have a, of course we have to have a suggested pairing. In cuisine, we talk about pairing. When you pair, uh, you pair a dish with a, with a certain wine. So certain meals go with certain wines. So in Alsace, Shukrut's traditional wine partner is either a rich, spicy Gewürztraminer or a bone-dry, crisp Riesling. However, an Alsace Gewürz, uh, Gewürztraminer uh, can actually overpower Shukrut's spicy, herby flavors and make the dish taste sweet. Um, better match is an Alsace Riesling, which is delicately floral with an acidity that matches the sauerkraut and balances the richness of the pork. Very important to make sure you're drinking the right wines with the right meal or it'll change the flavor of the meal. That's when you're pairing. You're doing pairing between wines and meals. Um, so that's shukru Um There's probably easier ways to make it. I've done something that's like an easy win, an easy version. You could just take like a crock pot and like cook everything together all at once. Like have sauerkraut, meat, potatoes, and just cook it all day. And then serve it with mustard, and that's easy. Right? <laughs> Pour in some wine. So you need a lot of time to do it. Yeah, that that one takes. That was the easy one that I showed you. I was telling, mm. you, and then I told you an even easier one. But the original shukrugani takes all day. My mom makes it sometimes. It's it's one of the best. It's one of the best meals I've ever had. It's. I want to taste it. It's amazing. <laughs> um, actually, let's see if we. Can, uh, because it's it's so tasty. Mm. Uh, I was gonna show some more photos of it too, just because it's uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite dishes. But it's it's a special dish because it it takes so long to make. So yeah. here's some more images. Really tasty stuff. <laughs> There's some good Polish kielbasa. Yeah. That's uh, Christoph's favorite. Well, one of his favorite. That's a specialty from Poland. By the way, uh, Abdurrahman. Yeah, big tradition of uh, making food. Uh huh. Have you met Krzysztof Abdurrahman? Have you guys met before? No. Oh, you should introduce each other. <laughs> there you, there you go. Wow, okay, that's. Krzysztof, I think you're from Russia. From no, from Poland. Poland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, from Russia. <laughs> because this name is curious to a lot of uh, people from Russia I met. They are kind of name, same. Oh, yeah. The name maybe looks a little Russian, yeah. Yeah. Similar, maybe. Look at all this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yummy. Wow. Tasty, tasty stuff. I'm getting hungry. Yes, you got to serve it with beer. It works really well with beer, actually. All right, I need to stop looking at these pictures, or I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some tools you'll need? Tools or appliances? What kind of things will you need to make this dish? Cooker. <laughs> Markov, it would be good. 200 uh, Celsius. Okay. What did you say, Abdurrahman? Markov. Markov. Markov oven. Mm, microwave oven? Yeah. Did they talk about microwave ovens? In I can't remember. Maybe so. That probably would help. Uh... Go pots. <laughs> pots, yeah. <laughs> you need some pots and pans, maybe. Pans, yeah. 
And what kind of what kind of meats do they suggest using for for this dish, for this recipe? Uh, grapes, uh, pork, and kielbasa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's a lot of pork. Uh huh. You need yeah. You need you should have yeah meats, kielbasa. <laughs> um, how much time should you allot? To prepare for such a dish, how much time should you make in your day? A uh, few days because of making uh, this sauerkraut. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you make a homemade sauerkraut, that would take a long time. Yes, but you can buy from store. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's a way to make it simple. You can buy from <laughs> store. Uh huh. So, um, would you guys be interested in trying to make this dish someday? Mm. Me, no. No. Mm. No, 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 no. Too much work or too much pork? <laughs> too much work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I've never made it. Uh, mm. My mom loves to cook, though, and when she cooks it, oh, God, the whole house <coughs> smells amazing. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Christoph? Uh, sounds good. <laughs> I would try to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for a special occasion. What occasion? Yes. Would you <laughs> some, some special occasion. Yes. Friends over or something. You can impress them with your cooking skills. Oh, uh, and ha what's that? But we have something similar, but <laughs> uh, smashed potatoes, uh, sauerkraut, mix it together. Really? With, with uh, 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 bacon, mm -hmm. uh, chips of bacon, mm -hmm. and then uh, and uh, you can serve with uh, kielbasa too. Wow! Wow! Mashed uh, potatoes mixed with sauerkraut and yes. Oh my God, that sounds interesting. What's it called? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know. I don't know even Polish name for this. Really, really? Just you just make. Is it common? Common dish? Yes, uh, I prepare that. Wow, mm -hmm. that sounds awesome. I was just my next question actually was, um, have you had this dish or have you had a similar dish? <laughs> yeah, so I have similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there anything like that you've ever had, Abdul Rahman, that is anything like this, uh, like these dishes we're talking about? Mm, yeah, we have, but um, I don't know what the, the names in English really. Yeah. Uh, Do you have like, something like sauerkraut? What? Um, Do you have something like sauerkraut? Sauerkraut? It's German style, but like it's... Uh, Oh, in Polish too, but uh, it's, it's uh, a cabbage. It's cabbage, but it's it's, it's mm -hmm, like yeah, chopped, yeah. It's chopped and it's uh, it's fermented, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it so it's, okay. So it's like kind of tangy, kind of vinegary. Yeah. Oh, okay. Same. You have that, okay. But uh, a lot of uh, meals, it's different. Not like uh, in Middle East, um, just different, but not like Europe or USA. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Turkey or come to Middle East, so it's yeah, you, you will see a lot of different meals. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So if you visit Dubai or this kind of places, yeah. So I'll have to try it next time I come to the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Saudi Arabian kitchens. Uh, Restaurants, because there's a lot of kinds from Asia, from Turkey, U.S. All kind of restaurants, because there's a lot of people from uh, all over the world. I think. Really. In Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Nice. Where Where in Saudi Arabia were you? What city? I was in Jeddah, and then went to Mecca. After that, went to Medina. Mm -hmm. Wow. And come back to Jeddah to fly to Westy. You did the whole triangle. 
a whole <laughs> holy triangle, basically. <laughs> Medina, some of the most famous cities in the Middle East. Yeah. Cool. Very good, very good. Especially in Mecca, you can't find USA Muslims. What's that? Yeah. USA Muslims, you can't find them there. Yeah, oh. Okay. So, yeah, Mecca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you kind of find people from all over the world. Yeah, especially in Mecca. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a destination for sure. Um, so let's recap here. Let's review um, our grammar skills. Um, let's talk about um, and let's try to let's try to keep it within food too, maybe um, or food and health actually. So uh, Abdul Rahman. Yeah. You make a sentence uh, for me using the word should. Should. Mm -hmm. yeah. I should. Uh, I should have milk for breakfast. Okay. With tea. I, I like milk with tea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. It's good. Yeah. Tea, yeah. I don't drink milk like uh, with itself. Just with the uh, uh, tea and coffee. Oh, so you you so yeah. milk is a staple for you. You always keep it, but you only use it to mix with tea and coffee. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Me too. In us, in our house, if we have any kind of milk, the main reason is to mix it with coffee or something like that. Yeah. Or to make or to or maybe to make a recipe, maybe to make a dish. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the United States, a lot of people just drink milk, and me and my grandfather. I live with my grandfather, and we don't really drink milk. I don't know. <laughs> Other things. Uh, okay, good, good. So, Christoph? Yes. How about have to? Make a sentence with have to. Have to. What can I have to? <laughs> uh, I have to renew my uh, license. Driver's license? Oh uh, yes, uh, for example, of course it's not uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It doesn't have to be true. I didn't ask you to tell the truth. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have, because I actually, actually, I don't have uh, <laughs> something to. I have to. <laughs> yeah. That's good. No obligations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, what a free life you have. Um, I actually do have to renew my my license. And I have about a month to do it. I better do that soon. In Georgia, I live in the state of Georgia, and we have to renew it on our before our birthday. And my birthday is coming up in a month, so I need to do I need to do it soon. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So and I want to, which day? Your birthday. Which day? Um, the 18th of September. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I want to uh, thank you guys for joining me today and learning about Shukrut Garni. And I also want to say uh, hello to the people watching uh, on the outside. And sometimes I forget to say hello to you. Um, there's a few. There's like four people watching this um, from the lobby, and I want to say hi. Thanks for joining us. And I have another class right now, and um, it's going to be really another really fun class. It's okay. about learning Chinese. Don't worry, it's an, it is an English class. It's all in English. There's no Chinese words, but it's about learning. <laughs> so, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. All right, so I wish I could go eat some shukrut garni now, but I have to teach. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Take see care. You. Good job. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye. -bye.